On this episode of Athletic Training Chat, we have Ashley Pepper, who is a clinical and outreach athletic trainer in the Waco, Texas area, working with a lot of the smaller high schools around the area and servicing many of them. In addition to her role as an athletic trainer, she also has been tasked with doing and putting out a lot of the marketing for the sports medicine department and highlighting their athletic trainers and what they do and the services they can provide. And so we talk a lot in this episode about some of the best practices she has come about in doing this without really any super formal training and how to get it done. And so there's just a lot of good insight to take away and maybe some ideas that you can apply to your setting and trying to help showcase what you do and make connections and generally show and advocate for the value that you provide as an athletic trainer as always we are powered by mueller sports medicine please check them out for all their sports medicine needs a lot of stuff coming out in august you've been following their social media Uh, they're always open to new ideas and different things to listen to there so please check them out and without further ado please enjoy this episode To this episode of Athletic Training Chat, we are on with Ashley Pepper, who is a mm-hmm. clinical and outreach athletic trainer uh, down in Waco, Texas, and at full disclosure, is my sister, um, <laughs> now married, so we've had to make sure that I get the uh, pr- proper last name on everything as this thing comes out into production, so, um, but uh, we are going to talk today just about the role that she has taken on more so recently um, in addition to all her athletic training duties and some of the marketing and outreach type stuff on social media uh, within their clinic. Uh, But before we started talking about all of those things, I just wanted to turn it over to Ashley to kind of fill in her background on how she got to where she is and we'll go from there. Yeah. So I started at university of Wisconsin lacrosse, for my undergrad, got my bachelor's in science of the flight training. Um, Joel made a, I would say preview, but you made a stop at lacrosse while I was there. So we got to hang out there for about what, eight months before you got the OSU job? Yeah, six-ish or so. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So that was fine. Um, and then after that, went down to Baylor University in Waco, Texas to get my master's while I was there. I got to work with the track and field and cross country team, um, which was really fun. Um, And then the team physicians that worked for Baylor Athletics um, worked for a clinic called Southwest Sports Medicine, which was at Baylor Scott and White Hospital. Um, They had an opening when I was graduating. So I applied for that and just kind of transitioned into there. When I started there, I was a physician extender role, working specifically with the um, sports medicine primary care physician, um, which was fun for like, you know, the first few months. And then I got bored. So I was kind of looking for more getting back into like the sports world and everything like that. Um, And so they opened up an outreach position for me to kind of move into that role. um, So I could be back going out to high schools. And the role at Baylor Scott White. Um, I'll call it Southwest Sports Medicine because that's the original name. Um, as a clinical outreach and light trainer, is just going out to these rural schools and seeing kids who don't have access to athletic trainers at those schools. The only access to medical they have is maybe a school nurse that comes in and out during the week. Um, so that's kind of the role that I've taken on since then. So then, what we're talking about today is some additional. Mm -hmm. things that you'll have to give a little bit more of the story of how those came to be for you but that's really been looking at some more administrative stuff and marketing social media engagement for Mm -hmm. southwest sports med um and your group and i guess before we get into some of those details how big is you know the entire group you know the staff including athletic trainers physicians etc that you're kind of 
representing, I guess would be the best way to say it. We have 11 physicians at our clinic and then seven physician assistants that work with their specific doctors. And we've got three um, orthopedic sports medicine surgeons, three primary care sports medicine uh, physicians. We've got two um, just hand and wrist and elbow surgeons, two total joint and then one spine. Uh, I think that adds up to 11. Um, so, and then my outreach of light training team, we have five of us. So um, unfortunately we had six, one guy left to go to um, work at a high school, which we still have a great relationship with. So we have, I mean, five is a good number. We love to have more to keep growing, but yeah, that's, that's the clinic that we represent. We also have orthopedic trauma that house in our office. Um, they're not directly associated with us, but we um, obviously work really closely with them. So. Absolutely. So what is the, the role you've been taking on for the marketing yeah. and whatnot? As a, I know, I personally have been getting more follows and things from things <laughs> else around Southwest Sports Med. Yeah. Uh, well, it kind of happened so weirdly. So we had, a mar- we had a specific person for marketing when I first started, and he did an awesome job. Um, and he want, he moved up into more of a practice administrator role, which, you know, is a lot more responsibility. So the marketing kind of went on the back burner a little bit. Um, and then he's ended up leaving and pursuing a different career. So it was kind of like we're sitting there for about a year, like we're not really marketing besides like our the corporate marketing team who's got so many different clinics and things that they need to focus on. But we weren't really marketing athletics or not athletic dream, but like sports medicine clinic anymore. Um, so it kind of got put on us one day, like, Hey, we need a bunch of sponsorships taken care of for like football programs, um, races and stuff. So myself and my direct boss, we were kind of like, let's figure it out. And then it came into like, Hey, we want to revamp our website. Who wants to do that? And I'm like, well, I'll figure it out. But, um, so we've done that uh, and then it came everything with, okay, now we need someone to cover apparel and like now we need someone to do all of our social media. So kind of was like, you know what? Our flight training team, we're already going out into the community kind of in a way being the face of our clinic and trying to get families and kids to come see our doctors. We might as well just kind of intertwine it into like, we'll do both. So Now, is that something that the hospital came down and asked you guys to do, or did it require you guys going and asking? Because I know in other situations that I may or may not be familiar with, there's a desire to do some of those things, but from the top down, it's maybe not as well received. Yeah, so um, it was more of our, like, training group being like, hey, we want to do this. Like we want, we, we can do better at marketing. Uh, we haven't had it in a year. We haven't had that person anymore. Um, so it was a lot of like going and asking and then, you know, make sure you're following all the corporate rules and stuff, which is like they're in place for a reason. Um, so yeah, we, as a team and I just decided, I'm like, well, I'll be the vocal one. I'll go email, um, try to get things rolling and, they were like, if you want to do it, you can do it. And I was like, Great. I want to do it. So. How have you gone and balanced this with all your outreach? Because, and you correct me if I'm wrong, it's not that you're just going to one school every day mm-hmm. that happens to be, you know, 15 minutes down the road. Um, you've got a bunch of other things going yeah. on with that and other responsibilities, unless those have changed too, but. Um, no, I mean, I have six high schools that I go to weekly. Um, I was said very strategic about when I go to them. So I group them into, I mean, they're all pretty close to each other. Um, it's a bit of a drive, but they're kind of within 30 minutes of each other. So like Tuesday, I go to one area. Wednesday, I'll go to the other area. Um, so that gives me like Monday, Thursday, and Friday to get my clinical stuff done and like my marketing stuff done. Um but it's like, it's so intertwined anyway. So like I mean, things you don't think about, like making clinic cards to pass out to um, the coaches and stuff. So it's like easy to can circle what doctor you made an appointment with and hand it to the kid. The kid can give it to their parent. Um, just stuff like that. So you're already going out. You're already going to bring these things to these coaches. So 
we've made it work. And the only balancing that we've struggled with is, you know, you also have these bigger schools around Central Texas that have athletic trainers and you mm-hmm. want to keep building and like, you know, we're the ones on the road. So it makes sense for us to be the ones making, continuing to develop those relationships and promoting guys and everything. So it's fun. It's very social, um, but we're going to do it anyway. So we might as well do the marketing stuff too. So you kind of reference these clinic cards, which I had never thought of or just even really heard of, not because I've never been in that role. Mm-hmm. Um, but it kind of inspired the, the thought of the question, you know, what have you found to maybe be the most effective? You, know, you referenced, you know, you're out anyway, talking to people and trying to have, make things happen. Is it been that or have you found, you know, items that you can leave behind or, you know, and if then, then this kind of like algorithm almost or something for people, you know, if you're not yeah. around or having access, like what, what have you found to be maybe most effective so far, or is it literally just tweeting enough? I, I think relationships is huge. Every time I go to a school, I try to put something into like either athletic trainer's hand or the coach's hand that has like us on it, whether like we've made these little like note cards that like, a lot of our coaches around the community, it gets literally just a card with our logo on the top and just lines and coaches will write their practice plans on them. And like, they love them and they ask for them all the time. So like, I'll go out to school and I'll bring more of those for like a coach to have, or like, if we're going out to a school with an athletic trainer, I'll bring out, we have these clinic cards on the front. It's got like our logo and our pictures of our docs. And on the back, it has appointment time, what doctor you're seeing and like the date on it. And we'll give them more of those. Um, So then it's like, oh, that's easy. Whenever, you know, I talk to them, I can just make an appointment with them. I can write that down, give it to the athlete, like I said before. Um, And I think too, it's like, make it as easy as possible for those like people to get into your clinic. Mm -hmm. I was doing like, a mar. I was, I mean, I've been taking a few little marketing courses online. And one of them said like, if you look at like a taxi service and Uber, what one are you going to use? Cause it's easier. You're going to pick Uber because it's easier than Uber. So make your business plan, make your like marketing plan. So easy for people to get in to use your people. So, I mean, I get, I mean, we have a, we have a direct line to our nursing manager to get referrals in quickly. And we hand the, that direct line on these little cards out to like, other clinics as well around the community um to athletic trainers like if they can't get a hold of one of us which is really rare um they can call that phone and they can get an appointment in pretty quick so I think that's what I've seen work so well for us is like we're able to get people in same day next day or within two days like as far as athletes like pretty spot on is that something you guys had to cultivate within your sports medicine because ultimately that really comes down to the provider's Mm -hmm. willingness to do it and I know where I'm at currently that is the nature of it it Mm -hmm. is not necessarily always the case with the one across town to the point where we've had conversations with some of their staff on like how we've done it and really Mm -hmm. the process from my end as the AT is super simple but if I have a provider that's not willing to do that 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 presents a problem um you know double books or you know some some of the different things there how have you guys gone about doing that has it taken any like you know coaxing from the athletic training staff or have the providers just been open because most generally sports med providers prefer to see sports yeah. med <laughs> they yeah they welcome anything like they're okay. like yeah we'll figure it out um i mean it may be like double book he's like just let them know like we'll be like we might be behind for du- we're double booking them but like we're gonna get them seen um no they're like we've got the most supportive like our sports team which is our ortho our sports orthos and our primary cares they're they're like super super supportive of it i mean yeah they'd rather have athletes on their schedules than like general public which i mean they'll see the general public but you know you go into sports medicine to see sports medicine right so they're yeah they look like they're very very supportive depending on the size of your city it's not sports medicine it's musculoskeletal medicine totally um, totally as as i've learned very very quickly yeah 
I had a question in there about metrics and if that's something that you guys utilize and what does that look like? And then kind of a part two to that question is, you know, you mentioned following corporate guidelines and this, that, and the other thing. Are there certain ones that they're expecting you to hit, you know, in terms of engagement, reach, et cetera? Um, it's been like interesting. So we, we do do metrics. Um, one of my coworkers, that's kind of her, her gig. She does pulls all the metrics from her um, EMR and, you know, so we like for only athletes. So we do like a range from 13 to 18. We don't really hit our college. Um, population as much because it kind of gets a little fuzzy with that age uh, we obviously that's room for improvement we could do a better job of figuring out a way to do that um our old president of our um hospital for our waco region he like he wasn't like huge into like the data like he like really i wouldn't say this guy doesn't trust it. he just trusted that we had the relationships and that we were doing our job our new president, he is like, wants to see the data. So it's been honestly really good because COVID happened and, you know, our hospital system went through layoffs and kind of justify why we had so many flight trainers on staff because sure. in, our, in our Baylor Scott White system, um, the Waco region has the most athletic trainers out of every other, like out of before Dallas, which is a huge system. And like, um, we have another huge campus um, about 45 minutes south of us. And we've got more than them. So it's kind of like, well, we got to justify ourselves here quickly because or else we're going to all be on the chopping block. Um, especially, you know, school shut down. There's no sports kind of feel right. a little nervous about that. Right. Um, so that's why, like, I mean, even the physicians are asking, like, well, how much are they actually bringing in? So we were able to, like, prove it with all these metrics that we pulled. Um, and honestly, I feel like it helps show – like give us more like ammo to market more and spend a little bit more money on like different things because they're seeing how many people are coming in from certain certain schools certain regions so I think it's a valuable tool for sure absolutely you talked about it and it's led in perfectly to a kind of a next question mm -hmm. um the value you know how do you prove the value of not just the athletic training team, but also the size of the sports team. You know, the goal is in almost everything is to grow. Um, we're going through some of that where I'm at now trying to mm -hmm. do more things and upgrade some equipment. And you start talking about $150,000 ultrasounds and people have questions totally. um, about how yeah. that's going to be paid for um, and whatnot. And then, you know, when you just the size of it gets big, but how have you guys gone both, demonstrating value internally which you referenced a little bit but then also you know externally to the public um and and beyond i mean internally i feel like you just we've, we've shown the number like so i guess i should go we literally write data for everything we do now because we're asked to so like all of our contract work that we do outside of the day-to-day we send it's not really like numerical data, but we send that to um, our president as well as how many athletes we got in from like in that event. Sometimes it's zero. It is. It is what it is. Some like you know a race you're gonna get. They're not gonna go to sports medicine. They're they're that bad. They're going to the emergency room. Um, even like we do. I'm sure you guys do it too. Like pre PPEs, pre participation um, exams for physicals for um high school kids we go out to like our bigger schools in the area after hours and do them and so that's exposure so you write down that data of how many athletes you saw there and then you send like we send that to him so I think just showing him how much exposure that we have and how many athletes were were reaching and we're touching and we're showing like not touching but you know like showing um who we are hopefully it will justify us to keep growing as an outreach team. Um, externally, I mean, you've got people coming to us from all sorts of different events that are putting it on. Our competitors don't have the manpower like we do to cover those kind of events. They have one athletic trainer where we have five. So I think that kind of just shows in itself, like 
we could say yes to most things where some places cannot because they just don't have the manpower. So right. that growth yet. So that answer the question. Yeah, no, I think that was good. Okay. Kind of talking more to the social media and even some of the other outreach stuff that you've talked about best do's that you found things that you're like this works this at least seems yeah. to grab people um you talked about a few things you know in terms of handing physically stuff to people so maybe that one would be more some social media and anything that you found that maybe isn't a don't but has not been as impactful as you hoped it would be right oh man so, so like some of the do's i mean as far as social media like I think, I mean, we do a Saturday clinic every Saturday during football season, like just putting it on everyone's faces. Like, you know, people can mute you if you're annoying, but like, so just keep putting it out there every Friday before Saturday clinic, I'll put out a post like, here we go. Um, I mean, social media has honestly been probably one of the hardest things for me to kind of get a grasp on because there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, I mean, you look at like the Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine page, and they're just so different because like they're doing so much research and putting out so many different articles mm -hmm. where like we are doing a ton of sports medicine research within I mean we probably are but they're not putting out articles to share with the public sure it's readily available um I think too just putting out your physician's faces so people can see them um and like do like little bios on like what they're what they're doing uh I mean we do PRP in our clinic um and just like putting that with a physician, I called it a win because we had a patient call like, hey, I saw on social media that this doctor does PRP. I really want to come in and do a consult for it. I'm like, okay, that's a win. Like we got someone in because of social media posts. And I'm, you know, at some point, hopefully we can track that a little bit better. Um, trying to look at what else. Yeah, some of those do, is that you mentioned it being an annoying thing. And I've, I've heard this from a couple different people that have done social media and digital marketing. It's like the rule of three. You almost have to put it out there three times before people generally catch it anyway. Yeah. Um, because just putting out there once, it can get lost so easily in the algorithm and the black box that is all of that, um, mm -hmm. that we can all blame it on. But, you know, kind of trying to make sure that people are getting it while balancing, like you said, not, not trying to be annoying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you talked about Twitter earlier, which is funny, like, I'm so bad at Twitter. Like, I've never had, like, if I just started a Twitter for myself. And then a lot of our doctors are on Twitter. So they're like, we need a Twitter. I'm like, okay, like, let me know if I'm like, not doing something right. Like, I'll do the best I can. Um, but yeah, it's just, that's a good point. Like, you need to keep putting it out there. And then, I heavily rely on like our staff to reshare our stuff. So yep. every time I do a post, I'm like, hey, just put out like a post about this doctor, like go reshare it if you want. Um, and they will. So a lot of that will reach even more people. So it's helpful when everyone wants to promote it, which is good. Absolutely. Um, no. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was moving on to the next question, if unless you had something else. Um, I was just like touch base on like, I mean, when you are an athletic trainer going out to a school and looking at an athlete, deciding they need to come see a doctor, you know, someone like adult, we well, I haven't really said adult, we, we obviously want them to come see our doctors. We've had to like, you know, teach some people like we, like we have a lot of contract trainers, like if they can't come and see a doc one of our like doctors based off insurance, it's fine. Like we aren't like not here to save the world. They're, like insurance dictates a lot of where you go. Um, but I think it's huge to like continue having good relationships with your competitors in the community. Because if an athlete does need to go to a different place, you're able to help facilitate that. And they're still going to look at you and like probably say good things about you as like the face of the mm -hmm. clinic. And that can like down the road, you know, turn into someone else wanting to use you or whatever. So that's kind of like, we've a big don't that we don't, we don't, we don't over push ourselves. We can't, we can't dictate where someone's going to go at the end of the day. Yeah, I totally 
agree with that one. And that was always something to juggle, even in the D3 setting of like, we ran into it multiple times where they could see our team physician, but then mm-hmm. they needed surgery. Well, surgery just made more sense to do back home, you know, where you're, you're close to home and mom and yeah. dad can be there and whatnot. And none of us ever took offense to that because you got to go and do what's best for you. Like totally. you know, we were just happy to help facilitate, you know, getting things done quicker. But if that's ultimately the decision, how are you going to get mad at that? That's probably going to end up making the situation a whole lot worse than, right, right. <laughs> than better. Yeah, it's good to be competitive, but <laughs> yeah. realistic at the same time. There's that definitely a human aspect of that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of a final question I had kind of around this is, I know you're going back to school and looking at yeah. a uh, MBA. Uh, how do you hoping that's going to maybe help or, you know, what are you going to take away from that to help in doing this aspect of your job? Um, I mean, I just, with marketing and learning the business side of stuff and how it works, I mean, one, I want to learn more about marketing. I think, you know, I've done self-research and I've talked with like our marketing team at the front line is so great and they're super helpful and, you know, I'll provide ideas to them and they'll say, yes or no and but they like teach you at the same time um I want to get better I want to get better I want to learn more I also you know I love being an athletic trainer um but also like really want to help our clinic grow and be the best it can be so hopefully in the future will be more of an administrative like a practice administrative role um whether it's at Southwest Sports Medicine or another clinic I just I really feel like have a good grasp on how a clinic runs so I want to learn more and I want to learn the more business side of things um too to kind of tie in all together like we we know we know sports medicine we, that's all we've that's all I've known up till this point um mm-hmm. so I think getting the business side of it if I'm gonna stay in a clinic setting would only benefit me more to continue growing in my career and helping the clinic in any way absolutely Anything else that we didn't cover that you would like to cover around marketing or just the promotion? Oh, man. I mean, I feel like I could talk about it all day a little bit, but I think <laughs> like standing out is one of the laws. So. Fair enough. Well, with that, you ready for the AT chat questions? Let's do it. First one is where do you see athletic training going in the next five to 10 years? Oh, this seems so hard for me to like look at and like think about. So I'm like, man, there's so many like, I get like, I think there's going to be this boom of increased employment opportunities. I think we're already seeing it, um, which I think is, is great. But hopefully that makes us a little bit more competitive, like financially. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, we're very, very valued as athletic trainers. I think I think a lot of coaches would say they've really valued their athletic trainer. Um, but there's no like way to quantify us at all. Like a doctor, they get like justified or quantified because they're seeing these patients. So we look at data. We can, you know, kind of quantify us of bringing these athletes into the clinic. But like someone at a high school or working for Amazon, like how do you justify giving them more a pay raise, you know? So I just really hope that, like, obviously, I see it increasing in opportunities, but I also hope that comes with being a little bit more competitive as far as, like, pay and stuff, because I think we do a lot more than people realize, and we deserve a little bit more financial um, I don't know, better financial payment incentive. for responsibilities we do. Yeah, incentive or something. For sure. What advice would you go back and give yourself as a younger athletic trainer if you could kind of set when that was? I like look back at my time as a graduate assistant at Baylor and I like laugh at like probably some of the stuff that I did. It's right. like, <laughs> why was I trying to save the world when I was like fresh out of undergrad? Like it, I just, you know, so I think for me, I would be like, know what you know, girl, like you don't know how to do that. So don't pretend you know how to do that. Um, I think that's a big thing. And I think I still tell myself that today, like, you don't know how to do that. So go learn it and 
know what you don't know because people are going to respect that more than trying to fake it and then you're wrong so well i like that advice and feel it feel it all yeah. Yeah. what has been the most influential resource that you have found in your career so far i mean i want to say like my peers i like you know I, my off i I went through the, all these questions with the guy I shared an office with. He's also an athletic trainer. Um, and then, like, we just bounce ideas off each other all the time. And, like, he's changed the way I think about things. And hopefully I've done the same for him. Um, obviously, I have a huge respect for my manager, uh, Mike Sims. I mean, he's been my mentor, not only in this, like, training realm. Um, he was the head of athletic trainer at Baylor. I was there. And now he works at Southwest Sports Medicine with me. Um, he came a year after I got there. Um, I mean, he's just been a huge mentor in my life enough where he married my husband and I. So um, I think he's just, he's a wealth of knowledge. He's been doing this. I'm pretty sure his license number is one. So like he's been doing this for a while. Um, and obviously like you, Joel, like we've probably really annoy people when we hang out at family stuff because all we talk about is athletic training and yeah. bouncing ideas off of each other. But um I think that's also cool. I think mom and dad probably like likes to see that too, but. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, at least I know my significant other and probably our brother. It's just like, okay, we get it. You guys <laughs> go do something else. Yeah, why don't you guys go hang out alone? We don't need family time right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've felt that one when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> As an AT in your role, how do you take care of yourself? Um, I think, I mean, I primarily work eight to five. I can pick up contract work when I want to, but like, I think work-life balance has been something that I really appreciated after going from being a GA at Baylor, working an absurd amount of hours, um, obviously loving it. Cause that's why I go to division one schools to do all those things, but also being like very over it by the time I left, um, and just like taking care of myself, like take the PTO, you've got it for a reason. So like, it's nice being at a clinic because it's like, you can take your PTO whenever you want. So, right, right. Yeah. If you could change or eliminate one thing, could be a modality, a common practice, a mindset, or whatever it is that you choose in the field of athletic training, what would it be? I probably, I feel like I kind of touched on it, um, about where, like, where I want to see athletic training in five to 10 years. Um, just like a way to define success for athletic trainers, you know, give us a, a that, like we're valued, but give us, show us how we're valued. I like it. Last question. What does being an athletic trainer mean to you? I mean, I think, I mean, I'm proud to be an athletic trainer. I love, I love my job. I love that it gives you the opportunity to do a lot of different things and learn a lot of different things. Um, my role specifically, I mean, and any role as an athletic trainer, it's social and I love being social. You get to meet people, um, learn stuff from them. So I just feel extremely lucky to be able to help people, help families, build those relationships. Um, and get to celebrate with them when they, you know, are done or get cleared from the doctor. Like I get to be along that whole journey. Just pretty proud of that. It's fun. Awesome. Uh, kind of in closing then, if people wanted to get in touch with you or follow along on um, mm -hmm. your social media adventures, yeah. uh, what would be the best place for them to do that? And we'll link all of these up. Um, okay. I mean, I'm not that um, entertaining on social media, um, but Ashley Pepper or Ash Pepper is my Instagram. Um, Facebook, it's Ashley Lukey Pepper. And then Twitter, don't even bother. It's so bad. <laughs> we'll link it up anyway. We'll, we'll <laughs> encourage her to get, get on there a little bit more <laughs> and get going. So, sure. well, awesome. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, oh, yeah. A little sorry that it took to episodes in the 100 and teens to you know i was just waiting uh, yeah i'm, I'm sure you my time i'm sure you didn't want to be like oh my sister's an obvious choice to do if i like training <laughs> that so we'll, we we'll wait a little bit we definitely spaced <laughs> it out well long enough so 
Well, I appreciate you taking the time and thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you for listening to this episode of Athletic Training Chat. We truly appreciate you taking the time to hear from one of our own in the profession and what they're up to and trying to make the profession better and help advocate for athletic trainers. Uh, We have partnered with Mueller Sports Medicine on our Throw a Lifeline program. This is an emergency ready kit that we are fundraising about $175 per kit to outfit with basic medical emergency supplies and are getting those to athletic trainers that for whatever reason do not have the budget um, or the support to get those and we want to help better serve uh, their patients by doing that many ways to support just by listening uh, any ad revenue that we generate goes 100% to support this program donations more paypal you can check those out on clinicallypress.com backslash throw a lifeline uh, all 100 percent of that goes to it uh, there's no administrative cost to all of this all of it is going directly to help athletic trainers in partnership with Mueller sports medicine thanks again for listening and we'll see you next episode